Meanwhile, in West Asia, tension continues to escalate, so much so that now the U.S. may be drawn directly into this war. So far, they were operating on the sidelines, but now they've suffered a direct attack. It happened on Sunday night at a U.S. military base called Tower 22. It's in Jordan. Tower 22 was attacked. Three American soldiers were killed. At least 34 were injured. It was a drone attack launched by a group that calls itself the Islamic Resistance in Iraq. This is the group that has taken credit for the strike. It's a group of militias that operate in Iraq and Syria, and they're backed by Iran. This Iran-backed group has been on the war path for months, since the October 7th attack by Hamas. They've attacked the U.S. multiple times. Reports say over 160 times. And finally, this weekend, they broke through the American defenses. It's a massive escalation. Three U.S. troops killed by direct Hostile action. It's a first since the Israel-Hamas war began, and this may force the Americans into action. I want to point out that uh, we had a tough day last night in the Middle East. We lost three brave souls in an attack on one of our bases. Yes. And uh, I'd ask you to come to the silence of all three of those fallen soldiers. Jeez. We shall respond. God bless you all. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Biden said that the U.S. shall respond. He also released a statement. The last line is clearly a threat. It says, We will hold all those responsible to account at a time and in a manner of our choosing. This has sent alarm bells ringing in West Asia, especially in Iran, the country Washington blames for the deaths. Here is how Iran responded. Resistance groups in the region do not take orders from the Islamic Republic of Iran in their decisions and actions. Repeating baseless accusations against Iran is the projection and conspiracy of those who see their interests in dragging America's feet into a new battle in the region and inciting it in the expansion and escalation of the crisis to cover up their problems. So Tehran is distancing itself from the attacks. It says it did not give orders to the militias that they acted on their own. But the U.S. is not buying it. Look at Biden's statement again. He said the attack was carried out by radical Iran-backed militant groups. He made sure to mention Iran. So did Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin in a separate statement. So they are not being shy about naming Iran, and American politicians are even less restrained. Republican Party Senator Lindsey Graham has called for, and I'm quoting, striking targets of significance inside Iran. Republican Senator Mitch McConnell wants Biden to, and I'm quoting again, exercise American strength to compel Iran to change its behavior. Even Democrats are not holding back. Congressman Hakeem Jeffries says every single malignant actor responsible must be held accountable. So Biden may not have a choice, really. Three soldiers have died. This is an election year. Joe Biden cannot afford to look soft, which means there is a chance that the U.S. would escalate. So far, it has limited itself to airstrikes in Iraq and Syria and missile attacks on the Yemen-based Houthi group. Washington was working on the principle of deterrence, but that has clearly failed. They could not deter the Iraq-based militias from attacking. So now the boots on the ground may come into play. And the Americans do have some. They have about 900 troops in Syria, 2,500 in Iraq, and 4,000 in Jordan. They had been placed there to combat a different threat, to fight the ISIS. The U.S. has been leading a coalition to take down the terror group ISIS in this region, but these troops could now be redirected and they may be used against the Islamic resistance in Iraq instead, or perhaps even against their backers in Iran. That risks another all-out war in West Asia, something that the U.S. and Iran have both been trying to avoid. And Iran's message proves this. So do America's actions so far. But this attack, may have changed the scenario. We'll keep you updated as the story develops.